days a day A banner's always coming my way Sunday is gloomy, my hours are slumberless Dearest, the shadows I live with are numberless Little white flowers will never awaken you Not where the black coach of sorrow has taken you Have no thought of ever returning you Would they be angry if I thought of joining you Gloomy Sunday Can you hear the bell? And we are recording Okay well, squirrels on the tree. Welcome to Savannah, Georgia. Again, our new hometown. Now there's a lot of squares here in Savannah and each one of them is equally as beautiful as the next. In fact, I don't think I've found a square that is not beautiful. But there's one square in particular and that is where we are today, Monterey Square. That is absolutely beautiful and it is also the home, so to speak, of one of the most famous homes here in Savannah due to a book and a movie directed by Clint Eastwood called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, the Mercer Williams House. Now it is here at the Mercer Williams House in Savannah, Georgia where the story, the famous murder, true crime of Danny Hansford took place, May 2nd, 1981, as well of January 14th, 1980, Jim Williams himself died here at the Mercer Williams house, which is right here. Now Jim Williams was very well known here in Savannah as an art dealer and he threw some pretty amazing parties from what we hear as well as the book and the movie. Now Danny Hansford was 21 years old whenever he was shot and killed in this house and in a moment we're going to show you the, where the, the outside of the room and where it took place. But Danny he worked here, so to speak. Him and Jim were lovers, if you will. But Danny was a little bit of, uh, I guess, the James Dean of Savannah. And a little bit later on, we're going to go visit his grave on the outskirts of town. Now, in the movie The Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, Danny Hansford was played by Jude Law and Jim Williams was played by Kevin Spacey, who both Taylor and I think he did an amazing job. But in real life, Danny Hansford was, like I said, James Dean of Savannah, always dressed in his trademark jeans and white t-shirt. And he had a crazy reputation around town. A little bit of a male escort, a drinker, a partier, I guess you could say. Now, all this is all things that I've read online, of course. It died well before I got here. But doing research on this house and the people involved in the real life version of Midnight in the Garden and Good and Evil. These are all things that I found. Now the other day Taylor and I took a tour of the house and they pretty much talked about Jim Williams and his love for art and his collection and not so much about his death. Now the word around town is Jim Williams actually died of a heart attack right on these steps leading into the house. Now as for the murder of Danny Hansford or you know being shot out of self-defense is in that room right there. Now, like I said the other day, Taylor and I took a tour of this place, but they didn't talk much about the death of Danny or of Jim. It was just pretty much, this is Jim's collection and these are the rooms that he lived in. Two of them were just out how he left it. But it is right inside those rooms and our tour guide talked briefly, kind of hinted, didn't mention any names, but he did hint that a famous murder happened in this house, but that is right there in those windows. Now, even though we can't take you into the house right now on a tour, plus they don't allow audio or video, however, we are trying to work out something of getting inside the house to show more than what normal people see on the tour, but who knows? But while we were filming and talking about Jim's death as well as Danny's 
death location. Taylor walked around the side of the building and she pointed out that you can actually see inside the room where Danny died. Now, aside from Jim's death in here, as well as Danny's, stories around town, whether it's ghost stories, some of the ghost tours, talk about two other deaths that happened on this property. One of them being a worker who was doing some repairs on the staircase, which is absolutely beautiful. We saw it when we took the tour. But another one of a little boy who fell off the roof and got his head impaled on one of these spikes that you see on top of this fence. Now the story goes that the little boy was playing up there on the roof, shooting pigeons whenever he fell and impaled himself right here where these spikes are missing. Now this happened in 1969 and the reason why these spikes are missing word around town is that the city, the fire department or whatever had to cut these so they can get the kid off without cutting off his head. Pretty gruesome. I suppose. In spite of what you would read in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil and the Clint Eastwood movie, Danny Hansford isn't even buried in Bonaventure Cemetery. In fact, he is buried down the street in a place called Greenwich Cemetery. Now, we do this thing when we go into a graveyard or a cemetery, it's called Cemetery Safari. We find the plot, not knowing anything else, and we go and look for it. And excuse me, I'm being attacked by gnats. But Danny Lewis Hansford is buried right here. Now, the, one of the only things that we had to go on was we walked through the plot looking for, or I guess the section, looking for beer cans. Now, Danny is kind of like the James Dean here in Savannah. He was a partier. He, pretty much everything that James Dean was, but here in Savannah. Now, there's a lot to his story, but today we figured we'd finish up the video here at Greenwich Cemetery Checking out Danny Hansford, gravesite, murder victim, Jim Lewis. He died March 2nd, 1981 at the age of 21 years old. Now I did call him a murder victim, but some will even say that he was killed in self-defense. That Jim Williams shot him out of self-defense. Either way, moment of silence for Danny Hansford. Now, sadly, there's not much to this cemetery. It looks just like any other cemetery across the country adds Spanish moss. But aside from a few really cool statues, there's really not that much interesting to see here, like Bonaventure or Colonial Park or Laurel Grove for that matter. But it is still a beautiful cemetery. Palm trees, Spanish moss, I don't think I'm ever gonna get used to it. Sunday is gloomy, my hours are slumberless. Dearest, the shadows I live with are numberless. Little white flowers will never awaken you, not where the